Man, right here in front. Hey, this is for Zach. Hey, Zach, after the way you saw Grambling defeated Montana State by attacking their bigs, was there something you were expecting offensively out of Grambling when you, during the first half to open things up? Yeah, we knew they had some bigs that like to uh, like the post up. Jalen Johnson like the post up. You saw him trying to um, trying to get some make some shots. Um, we kind of knew that their game plan might have been trying to get in foul trouble. I was doing my best to try to stay legal, keep my hands up, um, and stay out of those those predicaments that they're trying to put me in. Please state your name and affiliation, please, before you ask your questions. Go ahead. It's Kyle with Sports Report Media. Uh, Zach, talk about that guy to your left, about how he just makes this team go. I mean, 10 assists, no turnover. That's, a, like, that's an insane stat. I don't think people realize that. Um, I don't, people don't realize how much that helps the team. Um, he's under control all the time. He's ready. Like, he, we ask him to do a lot, and he, he steps up and delivers every time. Braden Smith is the man on the left for the transcriptionist. Matt, Steve Strimming, XL Sports, uh, right here in the front, brother. Um, I thought you did a great job of attacking Grambling in the middle uh, from the start, and I, I think you did, wanted to dictate the game that way, correct? And then talk a little bit about Kaufman Wren and uh, the job Heidi did. Yeah, I, I thought Cam gave us some, some really good minutes on both ends. You know, used his athleticism, got out on the break. Braden made that one pass uh, to him for a lot, but I thought he did some good things. <laughs> Um, defensively, you know, more than anything. Um, you know, I didn't think Trey had a very good uh, first half. I thought he was, you know, touching and hitting a lot of basketballs, but not getting them. I thought in the second half he was just more sure of himself and just played the game and, you know, strong and, and, and got rebounds and really helped us, really, really helped us get, you know, get off to that start. And he's a threat down there. We need him to be a threat on the block, especially when they're giving so much attention to, to Zach. Right here. Um, Coach Justin Abershow with the uh, sports journal, sports capital journalism. Um, you guys were super, um, you guys were super aggressive in the second half defensively. I mean, how does that build confidence for you guys going into the rest of the tournament? Yeah, we, we just, we, I didn't think our attention to detail was great in the first half. You know, they they got away from us a little bit, got some space. We wanted to keep them off the side to kind of open up. We wanted to try to box them in as much as possible. They were doing a good job when we did that of getting that separation. In the second half, I thought we did a much better job with that. And, um, you know, for us, we, we play a lot of position defense and we're trying to keep the ball out of the paint. But if you're going to play position defense, you got to keep the ball out of the paint because it, that, that's the whole purpose of it. And our, our guys did a really good job in that second half. But, um, you know, if we can't get stops, we can't run. And right as we had that start of the second half where we got stops, eight out of nine possessions, it really allowed us to push the basketball and then be able to flow into motion if we didn't get something in transition. Right here. Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Braden, you started the game very hot. You had three three-pointers in the first eight minutes of the game. And then with 12 minutes to go in the second half, I sent out a – the tweet that you hadn't scored since, and you immediately scored right after that, of course. Uh, but did you consciously switch into the assist mode instead of the scoring mode? Um, I just think I had some threes there in the second half, and they didn't fall. I think I, I mean, I was like 0 for 6 right there in the second half. So I think just trying to get the other guys the ball, and I mean, we pushed it in transition. We had probably six or seven possessions in a row where we just <laughs> kept going. So I found Cam on a couple of them, just shooters running. So being able to kind of have that. Um, kind of makes it easier for me, and I just try to get them the ball. Right here. Hey, uh, Greg Doyle from the Indy Star. I, I got one for each of you. Braden, you first, and then Zach. Uh, Braden, you were just pounding the ball to Zach early on and all game long, but they were singling him. Is that kind of – I mean, that's obviously the, the method, right? If they're singling Zach, you're just going to throw it to him until they stop? For sure. I mean, personally, I, I'd send two or three guys. But um, so we just try to give him the ball, and then he he makes really good decisions, whether that's him scoring or him kicking it out to us, and we'll make the play. So, thirty and twenty, something like that. Thirty-one, twenty-one, whatever you did tonight um, to do it on this stage. You know, you've done a lot of things, but thirty twenty is pretty rare anywhere. But here, can you just expound maybe on you look at the box score? What do you think when you see those numbers? Um. I mean, you say it's like a big stage, but it's just basketball at the end of the day. Um, I kind of came out trying to set the tone, trying to play as hard as I can, try to send a message to the team, like we're here, we're ready, we're good. Send a message to the country, like we're good. Um, and that, that's kind of how it played out. Yeah, right, right here. 
Zach, Ben Baby with ESPN. You know, y'all waited a year to kind of get this moment back to be the one seed again. Uh, what was it like to kind of be able to, to have the kind of win you did and to, to have the performance you did given all of the, the waiting to get back here? We just did what we were supposed to do. I don't think anybody on this team wants any praise for it. Uh, we don't expect any praise for it. We did what we were supposed to do, and we're on to the next game now. Right here in front. Hey, Chris Demersion, uh, KSLA TV out of Shreveport. Hey, Zach, obviously, when you, were you anticipating something Grambling was doing defensively to, in order for you to kind of get in the groove you were able to get into? Yeah, uh, we knew they were a team that doesn't, didn't like the devil. We weren't sure if they were going try to try to throw in a devil on a two-day scout. Um, they tried to stay, just elected to stay one-on-one, -on -one, um, and we, like you saw, we got the ball to me a lot. Right here. Greg Braggs, Boilers in the stands. Matt, uh, Grambling was doing a nice job of hitting that mid-range game. Uh, what goes into making that shot difficult on the other team? Yeah, I, I thought they were getting us a little bit too much space for us in the first half. Um, you know, they don't shoot a high volume of threes, and that's what we wanted. You know, we, we want tough twos. You know, analytically, it just makes sense. If you can stop their layups and their dunks and their rhythm threes, trying to get as many contested tough twos as possible. And um, the, the one thing about it is if, you, if you're staying out of rotations and they're getting tough twos, you've got good rebound balance. So it just trickles into your transition offense. And you just can't get frustrated. Sometimes guys, they'll get frustrated offensively when they take good shots and they miss them and they shouldn't because it's a good shot and they'll make a good number of them. But when guys take tough shots, especially when they're twos and they're from 17 feet that's contested, like you shouldn't get frustrated about it. Just keep doing it, keep making them shoot them but because the, the law of averages is going to say that they're going to miss their fair share. Right here. Uh, right here, uh, Matt Dylan Sin from the Journal Gazette in Fort Wayne. Uh, Matt, I guess you talked all year about working to get back to this exact spot. How did you think your team handled it now that you got back here? I think they were fine. Um, you know, the hardest thing is just, you know, being asked questions, you know, more than anything. Um, I know you're just doing your job because it happened, but um, for us, you know, we just want to practice and watch film and have a good time and get ready for the games. and. Um, but it, it, it's part of it, and it's part of going through it. And, and I think any time you have adversity, um, it can make you stronger. And I, and I think it, it's made us more mentally you know, tough as a team. And, uh, you, but you got to play to your strengths. And the one thing that happens is different opponents are going to try different things and, and, and try to keep you away from your strengths. And it's just kind of part of it. But um, you know, what we'll see here in this next game. But no, just uh, handling you know, everything throughout the year. For us, like we played one of the best schedules in the country. We played one of the best leagues in the country. So we've been challenged. We've been playing. But this is what we know. This is what we get judged on. But you can't forget to have fun. And you can't forget to go out there and compete and just lay it on the line. Like that's, it, it, like Zach said, it's a basketball game. Like go out there and have some fun with it. And we've worked real hard to be here. But, look, but keep everything in perspective. Right here. Coach Dave Reinhardt, WCBK Radio. Talking about having fun. Carson, local kid, right. comes in off the bench and uh, even knocks down a three. Some of your thoughts on uh, a special thing like that happened in, in, the, in a stage yeah, like this. Yeah, you know, it's really hard, especially when you sub in with guys that are all that are cold. And I, I told him, like, you know, don't, you know, don't do anything stupid, you know, when you get out there because you don't have a guy like Braden who's been out there for two hours running around to help you. You got five guys that are cold. Like, move the basketball, pass the basketball, you know, get it going a little bit. You know, you try to do too much, and you've been sitting there. They, they've been sitting there like you guys have. You know what I mean? Think about if you just got thrown into a game and you had to go do something. So it's a hard thing. But anytime those guys get to play, man, they're, they're, they're great. They, they help us so much in practice. They do a lot of things. Um, but for Carson, obviously, being from Lafayette, it's pretty cool. I played with his dad in college. And for him to come here and be able to play at Purdue and be able to go there. And he'll do anything, you know, to help our program. And so for him to get rewarded and knock down a three in an NCAA tournament game is pretty cool. We've got time for a few more. So right here. Uh, Kyle Nedrup, Indy Star. Uh, Matt, what, uh, you know, as far as Braden's play from last year to this year, what's been his biggest improvement? I, I think more than anything, not really an improvement as much as just kind of an approach to, to try to score the basketball. Like, we need him to score the basketball. He gets frustrated when he misses. Um, he's had some games where he's missed, you know, 10 shots in a game, and like, it just it frustrates the shit out of him. And we're always, you know, we're constantly telling him, you got to shoot the basketball, you got to shoot the basketball. Depends on what people do. If we can get him more in transition, sometimes if people want to hedge high, getting outside of it or getting people in drops to get to his pull up. So you're going to have more opportunities depending on how, you know, they, they want to defend him and they want to defend us. 
Um, but just trying to keep him aggressive, I think that's the number one thing more than anything, kind of treating it like high school. Uh, there's a lot of guys you coach you don't want to say that to. Like, don't treat it like high school, right? But like for him, you know, that, that, that's part of his superpower is, is, is really trying to be aggressive in those moments. Got time for two more right here. Hey, Matt. Um, Jerry Palm, CBS Sports. Have you had a chance to look ahead at all at Utah State or TCU? And if you have, what are the differences, the main differences between those two? I have not. I mean, I watched, I watched TCU during the season a couple times just randomly, but I, I wouldn't know. I, I keep it one game at a time. Now, those guys go, if you want to go interview my assistants, they, they, they go ahead and, and watch. But I don't let them talk to me about a game. We, we, we focused on Grambling State. And final question. Matt, down here. Um, for Hammer and Rails, Ryan Bonaparte, Braden and Zach, you've worked incredibly hard to pick your location for this game. How advantageous was it to be in front of this crowd in Indianapolis? Well, it was great, especially when they got into the stands. Like, you know, you're starting a game and people are filing in. Like, it's kind of surreal, right? Like, you know, you would think you start a game and, you know, everyone's going to be there. It's like a major city crowd, right? Like, like going to L.A. to an event or people show up by the fourth inning. But, um, no, it's – we. I always say that because, you know, we've had – how many sellouts have we had? Like 72 sellouts in a row, whatever. The, I don't know the actual number. But I always talk about it. Like, we have great fans, but we've got to give them something to cheer about. And you can, you know, be in Indianapolis, you can have the, all your fans that you want, but if you don't give them something to cheer about, they can't help you. So you got to play the right way, and you got to be tough on defense, and, you know, and, and that's our goal, to go out there, and, and we've put ourselves in a good position, but you still got to, you know, do the little things and, and execute and, uh, and help that out. Now you have an advantage when you play the right way and you do things the right Thanks, way. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, fellas. See you tomorrow. Thanks, guys.